Hello and welcome to McCool and the Gang. This episode I chat to the very wonderful photographer and videographer Georgia Flynn, who I've worked with loads of times about her own photography and other various projects, including her festival Shout About It Live, which combines live music and live photography. Now, this episode was recorded pre-COVID-19 in a very DIY fashion in a really small rehearsal room in Liverpool through my laptop mic and you can hear bands rehearsing in the background and it's very DIY Um, and just considering everything that's happened recently as an intro to this episode I just want to say how important live music is not just for us musicians Um, it affects so many people like photographers, sound engineers, lighting designers tour managers, tour agents, promoters, rehearsal rooms, event staff, bar staff and let's not forget, probably most importantly, the audience and you know live music isn't gone forever, it will be back, let's keep focused on that and I think this episode is a really positive reminder of what we have to look forward to, so here we go. Hello everyone, I am Natalie McCool and I am here today with Georgia Flannel Flynn, as it says on your Facebook profile. No, <laughs> it's so funny, honestly, somebody did a review the other day and they said Georgia Flannel Flynn and I was like, can you take oh, no. flannel off? Yeah. That is just a university joke that's made. <laughs> so Georgia Flynn, who is a live photographer, well photographer in general, but I know you through live music stuff. Um, so you do photography and you also put on a really cool music festival called Shout About It Live. Well, actually, it's not just music festival, it's music and live photography, which is awesome. So, Georgia, could you just give us a bit of uh, intro, like how you started doing photography? I mean, it's <laughs> it's a complicated one because I kind of do so many avenues of like photography. I do like yeah. other stuff as well, like design, work, videos, websites, a bit of everything. But um, I kind of started photography when I was 15. I think it was mainly because my dad told me that one of his regrets that he didn't take enough photos in his life. So I was like, oh, I want to start taking more photos. So I begged my parents for a camera and they got me an SLR when I was 15. Um, And then I'd just be taking pictures of like, I live on the Wirral, so it was like going down the beach in New Brighton and taking pictures there of like tyres and the sand or whatever. Any of my friends who would pretend to be a model for me, <laughs> um, they didn't like it. They don't like it when I send them the pictures nowadays. Um, so yeah, it kind of started there and like um, my school didn't have a A-level in photography so I asked them to like create one. So they did, so I could do oh, A-level photography. Well done you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, I did that. They don't do it anymore actually, it's quite devastating. What? They stopped it, I know. Um, so yeah, I did it in A-levels, um, and then I went to university in London, went to University of Westminster to do a course called Contemporary Media Practice, so it was a bit like photography, film, animation, interactive installation. I didn't actually do photography in university a lot, the module that it had to be like, oh I'm so arty, the meaning behind my photograph <laughs> is so deep. So I went to the interactive side, so I built an interactive installation called How Long Until a Robot Cries, and it was about the psychology Whoa. of people and technology and their relationship. Um, I exhibited them on Baker Street and I programmed them so that if people walked in between them, one would get jealous of the other, one would get really angry and make loads of angry sounds and the other one would be really happy because people are being affectionate towards it. (laughs) And then like, if nobody was in the room, they'd speak computer generated prose to each other. So they'd just be like, (laughs) the meaning of this is. So like, completely went off photography for ages. (laughs) And then I made friends with the music crowd. I've loved music since yeah. like a young age anyway. Um, and I used to start going to all their gigs and I was like, oh, I'll use my final loan to get a camera, I might as well. Yeah. So I was like working two jobs at the time, so it was fine to mm. splash out on something that I couldn't afford. Yeah. Um, well, then I started funny. photographing their gigs and then kind of came back to Liverpool and started just contacting magazines, like, oh, can I try this? Like, it was so hard to start with. Like, I, really? I had no idea how to use my camera until, like, okay. a year ago, and I've been doing it for ten years. <laughs> but I'd always just shoot in automatic. Um, like, didn't know anything about the settings. was just lazy yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm trying to not be lazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, the life I want. <laughs> um, ah, this is so interesting. I just want to talk a bit more about photography, because... I 
I, I really like photography because I did art in GCSE and RLA level and part of it was like playing with photos and actually I've got a painting I did for my final exam with my mum because a theme that I wanted to do was like mental health so mm. I got my mum, Barbara, shout out to Babs, <laughs> um, I was like mum okay I need you to act like really like panicky or stressed yeah. so I took loads of photos of it and they were really cool like Francis Bacon-y mm. kind of blurry weird like stuff. And I, I painted that and I, I, I sewed through it as well. Oh, amazing. I sewed, like, little words into her, like, lines. Mixed and media. Face. Mixed Everything media. Everything going on. But um, I, I was, like, didn't know how to use a camera. I think I used, like, a tiny little digital... It was literally, like, the size of my thumb. And it was shit. But... Was it one of them little, do you remember the keyring ones? That yes, you, to you to... know. Oh, yes. It was a keyring Yes. One. I took one of them to the sugar babes when I seen them. <laughs> And I've still got the pictures on a disc. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't know how to use a camera. I, was, I still have no idea. I've got like a proper Canon one, but I have no idea. Ooh, how, use it. how do you use a camera? I mean, I'm still trying to get that <laughs> question like, sorted. What is myself. the ISO? I don't even really. Like, I'm bad. Um, my boyfriend yeah, Mark would tell me about this. Really good. I know, like, I've kind of. I know it sounds so stupid and cliche to say, but I think I've kind of just got the eye. I yeah, still don't yeah, know yeah. a lot about cameras and I'm not ashamed yeah. of saying it yeah. it's mad running the community see that I've run and <laughs> people are like so how do we do this I'm like oh I don't know but this really cool photographer could tell you a bit <laughs> yeah. about this to me in my simple terms ISO is the amount of light you let into the lens okay right. so like if it's a really dark gig then you need a high ISO yeah some cameras go to a higher ISO than others right and if it's really well lit outdoors you need a really lower ISO but then there's kind of they work in terms of like if you go too high, then your picture gets more grainy, but you don't want a grainy picture. Right. So, like, you can change your shutter speed. So, if you have, like, a slower shutter speed, then you can let more light in that way. But then, obviously, photographing music, people move around the stage all yeah, the time. So, that becomes that, tricky. Yeah, that's true. So, I think, like, <clears throat> choosing live music as a kind of hobby is the trickiest way to learn how to do photography. Yeah. Because my first gig was in 24 Kitchen Street in Liverpool. And it's so dark in there, like the lighting is terrible. And it was a guy called Loyal Connor who is yeah, yeah. amazing. Yeah, he um, was fab. But I was just like, what the hell am I doing? And I must have took about 3,000 pictures. Yeah. Um, and obviously, like, you only get three songs to photograph usually. But okay. like smaller gigs, like 24 Kitchen Street, they don't mind. You can just shoot the whole yeah. gig um, as long as you're not in people's way. Yeah, but like yeah. most concerts, some of the even like two songs, in you go, out you go. Yeah. So it's trying to figure it out quick I didn't know that. spend time looking at your pictures but then you also don't want to spend too long looking at them because then you've got to keep shooting and you've only got like 10 minutes to shoot yeah so it becomes tricky but I don't know a lot about cameras still I'm still learning every day yeah. but I guess that's like the beauty of photography is that you never know everything and people always inspire you people always take a picture and you're like damn I wish I took that picture how do <laughs> yeah. I take that picture yeah yeah um, so it's good because you can just keep kind of growing evolving learning yeah. from different people I'm so um, glad I recorded all of that stuff about the technical details because I would listen back to that later. Yeah, learn, girl! Yeah. <laughs> the photography 101. Yeah. Photography. yeah. <laughs> but if you want real advice, ask somebody else because I'm useless. <laughs> no, you're not, I but, swear. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fun like, trying to just guess and I get the pictures I want to get, so yeah. how I get them, I don't know. Yeah, but well, your photos are fab. Um, I want to talk a bit about the other thing that you do, which is very interesting. Um, you started a festival last year. Last year was the first year, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the festival's called Shout About It Live, and it's a really interesting concept. Can you tell us about it? Please? Yeah, so the festival um, is kind of like a mix of live music and an exhibition of gig photography. It's so meta. Like, yeah. People are taking photos. It's like of photoception. Music. Like, there's photoception, pictures yeah. exhibited, and then there's photographers taking pictures of bands, and then there's people taking pictures of photographers, photographers taking pictures of other photographers. So mad. There's cameras everywhere. Yeah, I love it's it. A I mess. love it. Um, but yeah, it kind of came from. Um, so, like, being in the pit and photograph, I think I've done like over like 380 gigs plus now, I think yeah. I'm on. And I've only been doing gig photography for like two and a half years. Um, but being in the pit so much and dealing with the people that you have to speak to to try and get a photo pass or people expecting the pictures within an hour of the gig and you're like, I won't even be home, I'm like, I've got to drive home. Yeah. Um, so you're like, you're setting a lot of mission impossibles here yeah. um, 
and kind of like being a woman in the industry and not that I've got a problem with male photographers, the boss, and I learn so much from them, but yeah. it is a very male dominated thing, as with the music industry as a yeah. whole. But a few things that just kept building up inside me, and I was like, I just want to do something about it. I hate moaning about things and not doing something about it. Yeah. Um, so I decided to start like a community called Shout About It because I was like, people just need to shout about their work. It's so cliche, the, the phrase, but. Every yeah. time I hear it now, I'm like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, that's what it came from. Yeah. Um, so I decided to build the community. I started it on Instagram, just like sharing people's stuff, asking yeah. if I could share it and like making sure people were credited properly because it's so often that I spent five hours photographing a festival and then my name's just tiny at the bottom of yeah. the very bottom underneath the adverts and everything. You're like, come yeah. on. It should so, be on the photo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know a lot of us wore smart our picture. I don't do it with everyone. Yeah. It depends if bothered to be honest yeah. um it was just a number of things that built up and I just wanted to start something to change it so like that developed and I was like oh I know how to make websites and so I made a website and like started asking people to send in pictures and like feature their gigs and stuff like I haven't I still haven't got to the point where I get people passes but and then the festival kind of came around I've always wanted to put on like an exhibition and I was like well if I want to exhibit live music photography, I'll just get, like, loads of people together. They can exhibit, people can play. Yeah. Um, it was kind of a very tired idea on a 5am train to work in Leeds. <laughs> and I've kind of just gone from there. But, yeah, last year it was good. It was, like, had, and you like, had panels as well, which... Yeah, I, really I didn't do yeah. a panel this year, actually, because I think I just booked way too many people. Like, there was a 15-minute turnaround between each set. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, yeah. I had a panel last year and that was great. I think I just rambled on a lot, but it was good to get like two photographers that really inspire yeah. me. I just threw it on them on the day, like, hey, do you fancy doing a panel later? And they were like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but I guess a lot of people don't know anything about music photography or all the shit that you have to go through with it. So yeah. it was nice for people to hear it and be interested yeah. in it alongside the music. But yeah, last year was cool. We had like Deb came from America to exhibit. If you want to check her out, it's Deb Cloden. I don't Deb know if I'm Cloden. pronouncing that right. Sorry, Deb. <laughs> um, she came all the way over from Australia to exhibit, and oh, I was like, amazing. oh, my God! Yeah. And, like, this year I had um, Aki Fujisa Photography from Japan exhibiting, wow. and I'm just like, why do people keep coming from so far? Because it's such but, a cool idea. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. Like, it's nice to be able to build a community where people can just talk about what they like talk about what they don't like share their work I just want people's work to be seen by more people essentially and like there's so many people in the world like creatives and photographers that are so competitive and they're like oh they got that pass I hate them but having a community where people support each other and like oh my god that's such a good shot or just like giving them good feedback yeah good vibes good vibes Um, but yeah it's been really nice to build it and like the festival's kind of just gone on from there. I thought it worked last year, I'll do it again this year. Yeah. Made it kind of like four times the size. <laughs> so I, I don't get any funding. Like I applied for funding, but by the time I had set it up as a community interest company in February, it was kind of too late to do all like the lottery grants and yeah. work got really busy. So yeah, I didn't have time to sit and, yeah, definitely. Um, so I've set up a funding campaign if anyone wants to help us out. And that's just to make sure we can keep doing things like a run a lot outside of the festival like acoustic sessions trying to do more like gig photography workshops for anyone who's interested but doesn't know how to use a camera if you want to come along (laughs) Um, and I put on like a gig at a local youth club and we've got like a couple of bands to play um a photographer to come and like do a workshop on how to get into music photography and the band did a workshop on like where they should go from now because they're only like 16, 17 yeah. um, living in a rough area and they don't have as many school doesn't tell you to go and do photography yeah. school like didn't really pay attention to me because they were like oh you don't do science or I was like I, I'm interested in science I'm just not smart enough to do it. <laughs> um, but they kind of don't tell you about the careers that you could have in a the creative world yeah they yeah. just concentrate on the people who are doing like maths or are going to be an accountant yeah um, yeah so it was just more just to, like, inspire them to be like, you can, this is, like, a career. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't get paid out of, the, like, the 380-odd gigs of photographs. I think yeah, I've been paid for four. So it's a how, lot of money on, like... How do you, that was one of my questions. Like, how do you... Because, obviously, with, with a, being a musician, you do a gig, and most likely you will be paid for it, but, like, intellectual property is so much harder to, mm-hmm. like... Like, I get, I get that if you were at a wedding and you're providing a service, like a photographer, you would get paid for that. Yeah. But in music, it's, like, some magical thing. That yeah. It's doesn't... a bit crazy, like, 
yeah. a lot of it you do and especially in the start it's like photograph as much as you can for free just make sure you're getting into the places yeah. and getting the pictures building your portfolio but then there comes a time where you're like all right I've got a portfolio now I don't need to be paying all, all over the odds to go and photograph a gig when you're yeah. not getting paid yeah but I guess there's there's a few different routes in it like some magazines will pay for the photographers um, I mean Jesus I just want expenses paid like just yeah. pay for me parking and I'll be happy yeah um I think the best way to go would be like getting the bands to have a specific photographer um, yeah. and they pay them to come along like you don't have to pay people much it's just like yeah, a, yeah. you expect to be paid to play your music so expect yeah. the person who's coming along taking pictures yeah. going home and editing them for four hours like yeah. it's not easy we sit and post on Instagram all the time to share our work but then there's kind of a line of having it as a hobby or having it as a job so yeah. it's always been a bit more fun um, yeah. But the first year I did it, I started photographing like four gigs a week, and I was knackered. Mm. Um, so this year I'm a bit more fussy on who I photograph. Yeah. Like I won't go and shoot somebody for the sake of doing it. Yeah. I want to like I photograph people that I'm interested in, their yeah, music yeah. and stuff like that. A lot of festivals now, um, well, I suppose they always have, but on the crew list they include photographer. Mm-hmm. So if you want to bring your own photographer. Yeah you can do That's which true. I think is really great yeah definitely because yeah. um, like people need photos yeah. imagine a world where or like we went to um, the British Music Experience the other week in Liverpool oh yeah um, yeah which was really cool it's awesome, um, yeah. but there were like loads of pictures of Jimi Hendrix backstage and stuff I was like imagine if nobody took a picture of that like yeah people don't realise the value that photography yeah. adds to every industry really yeah it's like, so right. it's like having a wedding day but no pictures just like yeah. the idea is crazy and people are always looking for pictures of them performing yeah because it's it, like a photo is iconic it can, yeah can you imagine like all, all of the photos that you associate with the biggest artists and bands like mm. they're absolutely iconic photos yeah think capture one of the beatles without any pictures of them yeah yeah like what would museums do what would all the venues that yeah, make money yeah, off yeah. the name do it's crazy that yeah that's a really good point actually people should value it more yeah. I almost want to like start a strike of photographers to yeah. not take pictures of music for a year and see the difference that it yeah. makes not that that would ever happen that was a bit so... like the enemy just without photos yeah, <laughs> yeah it'd be... it's like half of the words, words, is... words 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 um <clears throat> so yeah I love Shout About Alive I played Miss Iran last year I just thought it was such a good idea, such a good vibe, oh, like bringing visual and, and music together. I had a really good idea for it, actually. Oh, I need to tell you about this. Sure. Um, <laughs> I think that you should somehow like set up a live feed, a photo, yeah. live photo feed. So photo, I was photographers trying their... to make that happen this year, yeah. but like by the time push came to shove and everything was like in the yeah, run it was yeah. like I just didn't have time for it yeah, like because yeah. I'm doing it every day after work from like six till midnight and my friends and family are like Georgia like we haven't seen you in four months I'm like I'm so sorry <laughs> I'm like, I promise I'll be free soon yeah um but yeah that's definitely something I want to do in the future even like just send me email me them overnight I'll get them printed in the morning and we'll yeah, put them up yeah, on the wall yeah. as well like that'd be cool yeah yeah so it's interesting idea. that you thought that as well because well, I do want to can... make that happen one day yeah, well, you could get around it, like, you could have a projector screen behind the artist. Yeah. And they would upload during the set, yeah. and you'd pick the best ones. Yeah. Quick and then Because, like, up. photographers were editing all weekend, like, they'd yeah. shoot and then edit really fast and then shoot yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we also have this thing on the website called Sunday Club, yeah. which I started as, like, a thing to make sure that I was always putting content out, because I'm like, oh, my God, I forgot to put stuff out for two weeks because I've been too busy. Yeah. Um. So... On the Sunday of the festival, we had like a Sunday club special where all the photographers sent me pictures to include in that week just from the festival. Yeah. Like, because usually we do it from like around the world, yeah. which is cool because it shows you the different venues, the different type of music from around the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was cool. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like having little kind of pockets of interest that you can have content generated mm. from. It's good social media strategy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you. Obviously, playing music live is such a, a like visual thing. Anyway, it's like so much about how you are. It down to like what you wear. It's so important. Yeah. For like an audience, and you know, if anyone's taking photos, obviously they are more interested if if you are interested. In yeah. Um. So, what kind of thing for you as a as a live music photographer? 
makes you want to take a photo of someone? Is it like based on what they're wearing or how they are or what? That's a really good question. Um, sometimes it is like personal interest. Yeah. Like my 15 year old self would have died if I had known that I was going to photograph Taylor Swift in a few years. Like she's yeah. changed her music a lot since then. But like when I found out that somebody was looking for a photographer for that, I was like, oh my god! It's <laughs> so like some of it is like personal interest. Yeah. Um, and another thing's like. I turned up to photograph the prodigy because of the light show and I was like, but then I got in the pit and I was like, oh my God, I do not know what I'm doing. Like, I was just <laughs> taking like a thousand pictures. Like, I really hope that one of these is okay because <laughs> the lights move so fast. Yeah. Um, and then there's bands like, a band called Vintage Trouble okay. were playing in Hangar 34 in Liverpool a couple of weeks ago. And I've never listened to their music before, but I've seen so many amazing pictures of them live because like yeah. he does this big jumping thing where he jumps to the side and like that's the shot everyone wants to get so like that one I purely asked to photograph because I was like all right I know that they do cool stuff yeah, yeah um so it's a mix of like if they put on if there's a big production that's always fun to photograph yeah I like to try and photograph color yeah um it's kind of what I'd go for trying to get the most colorful images possible yeah um so yeah a mix of that if the band's good or the artists yeah I'll always try and go yeah. um or if know that they're up and coming and they need photographers to like yeah. come along and get some proper photos. Yeah, yeah. Because like you can always take a picture on your phone, but it's never the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the perfect live photo for you? Would it be about a band doing a particular movement or like lots of movement? Um, not necessarily movement, but I try and catch. It sounds cheesy, but I try and catch like the moment. It's trying to catch how the audience feel when they're watching the band, or like if somebody's really into it when they're playing the music. It's trying yeah. to get that. Um, trying to just give a bit of personality yeah. to any pictures that I take. Um, but it is hard. Sometimes you're like, right, I just need to get some in focus and then we'll be fine. <laughs> Job done. Bye. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, cool. it's a mix of yeah, a mix of different things. But I'd say I look for the moment of catching something that somebody else wouldn't. Yeah. Like if there's ten photographers in the pit and nine of them are on one side, I'll go and stand on the other because they're all going to get the same photo. But yeah. I'm like, there's no point in me trying to replicate what's already going to be out there strategy <laughs> strategy again <laughs> so I do this project as well because like my full-time job is like photography all the things that I do as a hobby is my full-time job as well so often yeah. I'm scared that photography is just going to be work so I keep trying to do things like shout it was kind of a thing to make photography fun for me again um but I've recently started a project called making music Merseyside yeah all of the alliteration that's Ooh, the right word, isn't it? Yeah. English knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that is like purely focusing on people in Merseyside who make music because like we've yeah. got such a rich history of it. Yeah, we've got the Liverpool's amazing yeah. music scene. And just like trying to do things that aren't always live on stage. Like if somebody's songwriting, just being like, Can I come and take a few pictures? Ooh, or like that's if such somebody's recording, idea. going yeah. along and taking a few pictures, just kind of every process of like yeah. creating music like I still include live photography and yeah, stuff yeah, in yeah. there but um that's a fun thing for me like the Instagram's going really slow because I'm really bad at putting content out I'm so lazy with it <laughs> <laughs> I just don't do it um but that's kind of the thing that I'm working on at the moment is yeah. trying to get more content for that and like working with more people yeah. and you hear so many people's stories as well which is I just like people and yeah their story really so yeah. that's kind of a fun project to keep the light burning with photography and not have it as just work I'm obsessed yeah. with people as well I just wrote my songs about people oh cool and relationships um, that's, yeah. that's really good I think bands need the whole process documented because like when you're recording an album like so many bands just go away and yeah, don't... disappear for four months yeah and like why not document them mm. It's it's such it's so interesting. Like PJ Harvey did that thing where she was recording in oh, I can't remember what it was like. It was a, it was a, in London, and she she had like a glass partition so you could pay for like oh that's cool yeah you could go and see her for an hour while mm. she was recording her album and I just think that's amazing yeah I think I'm nosy as well like yeah if somebody has a song and they don't tell you what it's about I'm like well just tell me just like tell us, yeah. it'll add so much meaning just let me know what it's about yeah yeah so yeah it's that was a really cool idea though I'd love to go along I, I've been doing that when I was in the studio recording my stuff for uh, for this next album I I had um my friend James came down and recorded some footage yeah. and stuff. But it's a similar thing. Like I think it's yeah, it's just important for bands to 
show that and it's really nice content for fans as well like yeah, they get to see definitely how it's made and little videos like i did laugh for the last album i did um like a blooper video for when <laughs> i was recording singing takes and like it's just absolutely <laughs> hilarious because when i like don't do something right i'm just like yeah know. that's what i just <laughs> ah! noises. yeah like, i was singing like this really nice bit of the song and then i'm like oh yeah people need to hear that kind of stuff though like it's not just a it doesn't come out of nowhere like bands or artists don't become an overnight success there's a whole bloody process to it yeah the same with photography there's a whole process of going to a gig editing the pictures yeah and nobody ever really sees it yeah I never have pictures of myself that people take because I'm always behind the camera yeah yeah you should do a nice portrait shoot on the beach yeah get one of those friends to take fade a book it in Yeah, you owe me pictures from when we were 15. <laughs> you owe me pictures, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> pictures, bitches. Awesome. I have a few more questions. I'm interested in your own kind of experience of gigs now. So what has been your favourite gig for taking a photo? Um, like, I don't even like to say this because they're such a big band and I don't want to be like, oh, photograph these people because I love going <laughs> oh, go to, like, on. small, tiny gigs. But, um... I once got a really last minute pass to photograph Coldplay. <gasps> wow, that's big. Cardiff. Um, and I was in work at the time. And I was like, oh my God, I was shaking. I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I haven't got the day booked off. And so <laughs> I went and asked my boss. I was like, do you mind if I take half a day's holiday? He was like, yeah, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I've just got a pass for Coldplay coming because I had the holiday booked. Yeah. And then I cancelled it because typical, like, photo passes you don't find out till hours before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was like, right, I've got, I can't say no like imagine living your life saying that you said no <laughs> to yeah, go photograph yeah. Coldplay um so just got in the car oh, and we yeah. drove like it took us six hours in the torrential rain to get to Cardiff um it was at the Principality Stadium so it was massive and I almost died walking in there because it was so big wow. and I've never been at a front of the crowd that's that big there was only four photographers that's um, incredible so kind of like the moment that they started, obviously they have confetti cannons going off and I was so scared to be there. I was literally shaking, like, <laughs> could barely take a picture because I was shaking. I was that nervous. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of like really putting myself out there and something that I knew I was going to find hard after driving six hours. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, and I got like a really cool shot. It's not the best shot, but like, like that moment was a big moment for me. Yeah. Um. Like, the focus isn't perfect. But again, like, some pictures you just kind of accept that they're not going to be the best image. Yeah. Um, Is that on your Instagram? Can we see that? Yeah, right? it'll be somewhere. Like, I've posted it a lot probably yeah. too many times, so I can't oh, repost that's it. so cool. Uh, what, but it's, like, really colourful as well. It's, like, yeah. a confetti rainbow and, like, rainbow. 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 Hey. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the next thing, rainbows. Yeah. Um, so, like, confetti rainbow and just like Chris Martin running down the front but I was just like standing there with my like jaw to the floor like why am I here like what am I doing in this pit That's so cool. and then I was only allowed in for two songs so after that left the stadium because you get kicked out and then no. drove six hours back so you 12. get kicked out you can't say, say to see the rest of the gig no what? with like the bigger artists you just get completely kicked out like if you've got a ticket to go back in you have to go back to your car to put your camera in your car and then go back into the gig. Wow. Um, so yeah, a whole 12 hour round trip just Swear for a them. shot. But yeah, definitely. So like, even though I don't like saying it because it's like the big bands that are photographed and I don't want to be like, oh, I'm such a big music photographer. You don't feel that way but, at all? Like, it could be anything. Like, I love photographing the small gigs that barely anyone's there and I'm like looking yeah. at somebody and I'm like, you're going to be so big in a few years. I'm so happy I'm here. <laughs> you're going to be big, girl. Yeah. Um, you get it! You get it! Um, what has been your most awkward gig for shots? And you don't have to say anyone's name it just tells about how they were or why it was awkward. Um, nobody's really awkward. It's just kind of some gigs are a bit difficult. Yeah. So like collecting your past like, there's always some idiot on the front desk who, like, yeah. has proper job's worth. And they're like, mm, no, I can't, I can't it. find it. Yeah. I'm like, no, it's definitely down. I've confirmed it with the company, like, four times. Like, I've yeah. worked hard to get this confirmed. It's there, and I know it is. And they just take ages. And then they give you hell, and then security give you hell. And just, like, for God's sake. And then I'm very well aware that photographers really annoy fans when we're, like, walking down the, to the front of the crowd trying to get to the pit. And they're, like, looking like, oh! 
do not get in front of me. This is my favourite band. I've never and I'm experienced like, that. No, haven't you? Yeah, no. But like people just look at you like, oh, just get out of the way. And then you finally get to the pit and then get him back out because you you know you've got to leave and you can't yeah, be able. Sometimes yeah. you sneak in and stay there. Yeah, yeah. Um, shh, don't tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody's really been awkward. It's more like people expect the best pictures, but yeah. they'll play on a stage with no lights. Yeah. Or like the lighting will be perfect and they start playing and it goes dark and you're like well Grace I might as well leave bye now oh man lighting's so important isn't it actually yeah. Yeah. people like kind of forget about it so I really mm. appreciate bands that have like a colourful stage or just at least a well lit stage yeah it's so hard with lighting because it, either you take your own lighting which generally costs a fortune yeah. and it's really bit of, like quite a big bit of production or you're relying on the venue's lighting which can be not Mm-hmm. So it's it's really difficult that for bands, but you just got to deal with it. Yeah. Like I, I went to see. Do you know a band called Husky Loops? No. They're an Italian band, and they're like, I've described them as lounge math, which is like the weirdest. <laughs> Never band. heard of lounge math. Yeah. <laughs> but you listen to them, you're like, yeah, this is totally lounge yeah. math. Um, <laughs> and they're, they're so good. They're like three piece. They're a bit crazy and like. They're like a rock band, but they have lots of electronic weirdy yeah. bits, and they have like strip lighting on the floor that's really white, really mm-hmm. bright, and it just like you know it that really s- lights up the stage. Yeah, like, like really sixties almost kind of. Yeah, and the mm. shadows are really good. Oh, that's cool. And I was just think I I just thought that was so cool, and I was like, ah, oh, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, because <laughs> I want everything to be white on the stage. Yeah. Like, oh, interesting. My vibe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, awesome. Um, I just have a few silly questions now because I, I do this for everyone. Fun. Just to finish off, I got a little game for you. It's called Mints or Mints. Mints or Mints. <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically, I'm going to say the word mint, and you have to tell me whether you think that I mean mint the <gasps> sweet or mint the meat. Me and my friend do this with letters and lettuce. That's so good. Yeah. You can also have chants, like a monk chant and a oh. chant. Like give it some chants. Yeah, I like this game. I'm, okay. I'm into it. Right. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Mint. Like the mince meat. Yeah. Absolutely mint. nailed it. Yes. You do one. Mints. That's the sweet. Like the mint. Yeah. Yeah. Yes! Woo! No, I like it. it. <laughs> I'm gonna play that with everyone. Now. Wait, oh, what about lettuce? Fun game. We'll do that one. Okay, go on. Lettuce. That's definitely vegetable. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was because she's from London, so like a lettuce. Scouse accent's very different. Lettuce. Like fake Scouse. Lettuce. Lettuce. <laughs> it's just the yeah, same. Lettuce. Lettuce. Mince. Mince. Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. Thank you so much, Georgia. No worries. Thanks so and much for having me. Where can we find you online? What would you like to plug? Um, just georgiaflynn.com yeah it's my own stuff and shells about it on like Instagram and Twitter and stuff it's shells about it UK although it's not just in the UK we're it's worldwide now <laughs> worldwide babe join us from anywhere <laughs> awesome thank you so much no worries thank you <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and follow to this podcast. I'm Natalie McCool and you can find me and my music on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and also on my website nataliemccool.co.uk. Thanks!